Today, the president of the California Senate, Daryl Steinberg, introduced legislation that would address what's a terrible higher education problem uh, in the state right now. Right at, currently, uh, almost half a million students are on waiting lists to take basic college classes, algebra, English composition. These are classes you have to take in order to graduate. Uh, and students can't take them because uh, budget cuts are such that there simply aren't enough spaces available both in physical classrooms and in the online classes that the uh, California public universities offer. What the bill will do is say that any student who's on one of those waiting lists can take a class from an improved online higher education provider who doesn't necessarily have to be an accredited college. So think about the massive open online courses uh, a lot of us have read about recently. Coursera, Udacity, edX. Um, there are uh, companies like a, a company called Straighter Line uh, that are just in this business of offering online courses for very low amounts of money or for free uh, that have been actually approved by higher education bodies as of high quality. Under this bill, students on that waiting list will be able to take those online courses and then transfer them back into regular public colleges for credit and the colleges will have to take them for credit. So it's really, it's, a, uh, it's an attempt to use all of the exciting innovation that's happening in the online higher education space as a way of solving this really critical problem of access to higher learning. It's nothing but a good thing for California students, I think. Um, again, uh, if you're a, a student who needs a degree to get a job, not being able to take basic classes is a, ter is a terrible problem. Uh, it means you're more likely to drop out. It means you have to stick around and enroll in other classes. And so your education becomes more expensive and takes longer. Maybe you have to stay in school for five years or six years to graduate just to get the courses you need. So I think that this will be a boon for those students. Um, in the short run, it won't have an impact on California facu faculty because keep in mind, you have to be on the waiting list in order to do this, and so no one's teaching those people right now. I think in the long run, however, it really does set a precedent which says that um, higher education can be regulated and subsidized um, and offered by companies that aren't accredited colleges and by implication by people who don't have PhDs and aren't faculty as we think of them now. I think this is a, a groundbreaking public policy development, and it's actually, in a way, pretty consistent with something that President Obama uh, uh, proposed in the policies that he released around the State of the Union last month, where he said that we ought to look at uh, providing an alternate way to let students use their federal financial aid to take online courses from organizations that aren't colleges. So I think what you see is uh, a, a policymakers having a strong interest in helping more people go to college, trying to find new solutions to the rising cost of college, looking at the fact that we have really an explosion of online higher education offerings, many of which at very low prices, and saying, how do we change our public policies to uh, make use of all this innovation on behalf of the public interest and the student interest? But what it means is we're really starting to kind of break apart an arrangement for governing and funding higher education that's been in place for uh, 150 years at least, where we would um, only pay students to go to colleges to get a college education. And now we'll be paying for them to go to people who aren't colleges to get a college education. So that's big.